How's it going YouTube? It's Panda time. For this video we're trying something a little bit different. So I'm looking at Mirage Gagamon in BT11. Now I want to start off by saying that I've not played this deck. I'm not really, you know, BT11 hasn't even been fully revealed yet. We're still waiting on cards. I'm not like out there playing the BT11 meta because we don't know what it's going to be. Uh, but I figure it'd be a cool idea to look at the new Gao cards and think of like how I would build a deck if we could do it right now. And keep in mind, it's just, you know, ideas, theory crafting of what I think would be good and how I would build the deck. And let me know if you guys enjoy this type of content, if you got, would like to see more videos like this in the future, or just your thoughts in general on Gaumon and BT11, I guess. So, Upamon is pretty good, you know. For the longest time, Upamon was the blue Digitama, carrying blue, very, very strong. But the new Wandjumon is absolutely insane, and it might even overtake Upamon as the go-to blue baby. Uh, when attacking, if you have a tamer, draw one. We're gonna play a bunch of tamers, so naturally it's gonna proc all the time. It's an easier, easier condition to fulfill in the Upamon, and card draw on the baby is fantastic. No surprise, we're gonna play four of those. Uh, the new Gaumon is really, really good, so I definitely would like to play it as a four-off. Uh, on play, you're gonna search for your Gaugamons and tamers, which is kinda nice. And then he has a good inheritable to bounce level 3s, which you would want in this type of deck, right? I feel like the EX Beamon would be a good addition as well, because uh, when you restand, you're gonna gain a memory. And as you'll see, we have a lot of ways to restand in our stacks. So getting some free memory for doing that is pretty nice. Uh, in this build, I don't have Hammer Spark, so we have these other ways to get free memory. So that you could do all the plays that you need. Uh, the Beamon seems pretty good. The other rookie that I like that I feel would be really good in this deck is the Belukamon promo. And honestly, and this is kind of like a whole separate topic if you want to talk about it, uh, but these rookies are absolutely absurd, I think they're really really powerful, and I kind of worry that all decks will essentially just always play this because they're so so strong. Belukamon is, uh, has a security effect, he draws two and then he goes to your hand, so if they check this you get three cards to your hand, which is pretty crazy, so why not, right? It's just very very powerful. Uh, we'll talk about security rookies maybe some more time, but definitely going to be playing four of these. Uh, I also thought about maybe running like EX Gobble to search for tamers or things like that. You can run things to give you DP in Heralds, but honestly I think this is good. Like the Gaumon for sure, and I like the idea of the Beamon. Uh, for the champions, we're not going to run the old Gaugamon because I don't think it's that good sadly. Uh, but the new Gaugamon is pretty sweet. When attacking, if your opponent has 8 or more cards, you get a memory. And if you have jamming, you're going to be able to swing for free and get the memory. Also has a good inheritable. And you know, he's a Gaugamon which is going to matter a lot for his type of deck. Then we're gonna have uh, Lobomon as a 4 off because we play a lot of blue tamers. And although this will not be a blue hybrid deck, I think that being able to have hybrid to close out the game is gonna be very important. Uh, so it just makes sense that we play Lobomon. I don't think there's a bunch of other level 4s that we want to run a deck like this, so hybrid seems nice. And alongside of that, we have Leomon as a blocker. Uh, Leomon is a pretty cool blocker because, you know, when he dies, you get some memory, you get some card, which is nice. And he's kind of just whatever. Again, uh, Aside from the new Gagamon, really could play kind of anything, so I figured we run hybrids and blockers. Kind of just makes sense for the utility spots in level 4. Now for the 5s, I absolutely love Matt Gagamon as a Digimon. He's a dog with sunglasses, so very, very cool. The new Matt Gagamon is really strong. Uh, when Digivolving, he's going to get blocker and then plus 2000 DP for every 4 cards your opponent has. So on average, we can assume your opponent has 8 cards in hand. You know, this guy's getting... 4,000 DP, which is really solid, making him 11k blocker. Then he also has an Inheritable, where when your opponent gets a card added to their hand, you get to unsuspend, so is that unsuspend synergy is all turns, which is really strong. It's a once per turn effect, and again, he's the Mac Agamon, which is really relevant as well. Now, we're not running the old, you know, rookie or champion, but I think the old Mac Agamon has always been a fantastic card. Uh, so you can Digiverse 2 and return a level 4, which is really nice. All our other effects are bouncing level 3s, and when we need to bounce level 4s, Magagamon is the way to go. He's also a Magagamon again, which matters, and then the Inheritable is kind of good when you have a Terran play, which we will. You're gonna get plus 2000 DP, and the DP might not matter, but it is nice to have some extra DP in case you need it in this type of deck. Now, the main reason we're actually playing this deck, or you would play this, is because the new Mirage Gagamon, I feel, is a very powerful card, so let's talk about him. Uh, so, Mirage Gagamon, right, so it's Gagamon in his name, which is good, 12,000 DP for to Digivolve. When did you roll in? You can return a level 5 or lower Digimon to their hand, but if you can't bounce the Digimon Vice effect, your opponent can add the top card of security to their hand. So essentially, you're trashing their top security, 
Uh, it's a bit worse because it goes to their hand instead of the trash. That said though, in this type of deck, that's a better uh, condition because they have a card added to their hand by an effect, aka all our effects are going to proc, uh, which is really, really solid. So that alone makes them a good Digimon. Uh, but then the all turns effect is I think where it gets really crazy, where it's uh, all turns once per turn when a card is added to your opponent's hand, you gain one memory for every four cards in your opponent's hand. Now I think that all decks in Digimon either draw or search, it's the most basic effect that any deck could do. And I would imagine that literally all decks do this. I can't think of a single deck that doesn't do this. So anytime your opponent's gonna do any one of these effects, and by the way, this is from like anything that's not draw for Digimon, right? So like if your opponent swings with a stack and they have an Upamon, they draw, this effect's gonna proc, right? They hard drop an Agumon to search top three, they add an effect, that's, they add a card, that's gonna proc this. They play a Cool Boy, a Memory Boost, a Davis, anything like that. And like all decks in Digimon play this because it's the way that Digimon is played, right? So I think that having this guy out there is gonna make it very awkward for your opponent to do their things. And then on your turn, first of all, when you Digivolve, you're potentially doing, you know, extra damage. As you could, like, have swung with your Mac Algamon, go into this guy, you know, they lose the security, he's gonna restand from the Mac Algamon here, well, then he can swing again, right? Also, you're going into it for less than four memory. Ideally, you're going into it for two. In crazy cases, maybe for one, but realistically, two, right? And we can assume that in your opponent's turn, if they do any of those search effects, which a lot of times are mandatory, like for example, when you have the Garur on sack and you swing and you draw for Garur, like that's a mandatory effect, you can't choose to not do that. So if they proc those effects, you're gonna gain like two memory, which is like a hammer spark on their turn, which is, you know, I think pretty solid. So I feel like there's ways that you could play Mirage Gagamon to like make like an OTK or a lot of damage, a very aggressive Mirage Gago, or maybe just go into it early on and just let it sit there because it's gonna annoy your opponent and make their life super uh, difficult, right? So I feel like he's a pretty cool card. I definitely wanna see the alt art. And because of this guy, I would like to play the deck. So here we are theory crafting ideas. Now, I think I do run one of the old Mirage Kagamon. He's not the greatest Digimon. Uh, he's unblockable and then he gains one memory for every four card in your opponent's hand. So ideally, he's just like a cheap Digivolution and his name is Mirage Kagamon, which is relevant. But I think it would only be a one-off, realistically. Beyond that, we would have two Blitz Omnis because we're a blue deck that can be aggressive. We get a lot of extra swings, as you can see. So it just makes sense that we have access to Omni one to close the game out. Uh, that's it for Digimon. Then I would have two Memory Boosts because Memory Boosts just make sense. It's just the way we play Digimon. Now, in here, I have two Gakata's Breath. And keep in mind that as of this video's recording, they have not revealed any other Gagamon cards. I expect them to reveal a Gagamon option. And if it is good, then we would play it here instead of Krakata's Breath. Uh, but right now, I don't know if it exists or if it is good. But the idea is that Krakata's can bounce things to your opponent's hand to proc your effects. If they swing into your security and you have Krakata's in security, uh, you know, it's going to return a card and you get to, for example, proc your Mirage Gagamon effect, right? So, like a bounce defensive spell. Now, I think the red plugin would be really good in a deck like this uh, because our single stack can get a lot of swings. And ideally, that stack is going to have jamming. So I kind of want to maybe add a second plugin. I feel like it can take our stack from doing like a little bit of damage to potentially being like a full OTK, right? Like for example, if you promote with the Gaugamon and you can give him the plugin, let's say you have three memory, right? You spend two on the plugin. So you're at one, but he swings to get the memory back. And then you can start doing shenanigans if you unsuspend with, for example, the uh, Thomas, after you can unsuspend, maybe gain a memory for the Beamon, you swing in for two more checks, again, you have jamming, right? So it's kind of nice. I feel like plugin just fits well in a deck like this. For the Tamers, I think a split of 3 to 2 would be pretty solid. So uh, Nikola is kind of nice. He gives your Gaomons or Gagamons jamming, which again is nice. It's how we're going to protect ourselves from our effects. And then when your opponent, when you add a card to your opponent's hand, you can suspend him to gain a memory, which again is going to give us the memory we need to, you know, do our plays, play our hybrids, or memory booster options, and that type of stuff. So he seems like a pretty solid tamer, I feel like 3 would be a good number. Uh, for the memory tamer, I feel like Davis is just the way to go. We don't need to play any other crazy like color tamer or anything like that, so Davis seems good for his searches. Uh, and then Thomas is a pretty solid tamer, you know, he came on MBT4 and he was not played because the Gal support was trash. Uh, so on play you draw one, which is okay, uh, but the main reason he's good is because if your opponent has 8 or more cards, which they should if you're bouncing everything to their hand. You can suspend Thomas to unsuspend a Digimon with Gao. 
which is, you know, pretty easy condition, right? Like you have a Gao Digimon, which all your Digimons are Gao for the most part. Suspend Thomas, unsuspend them, you get extra swings. And when comboed with the Mirage Gagamon, when there's Woman Fact, potentially the plug-in, the unsuspend, inheritable for my Gagamon and Blitz Omni, it's gonna give us a ton of damage to work with. So this is my theory craft for the Mirage Gagamon deck list. Uh, this is how I would build it. I'll probably try it out when it comes out. Maybe I'll play a little bit in tabletop once we actually get all the cards revealed. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be pretty solid. It might not be tier 1. I have no idea what the BT11 meta is going to look like. But it looks like a pretty fun deck to me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And let me know if you guys would like to see more content like this in the future. Because, you know, looking ahead into what Japan is getting for cards is always a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching.